Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins, and today I'm going to start a three-part series. The first two parts are going to deal with customizing the picker control. And here's what I mean. Normally you have a picker control, and it's it's kind of like this. You know, it just has uh, columns in it with data, and that's not really customizing the, the view of the picker. This is just kind of standard setup. But what I'm going to show you how to do is how to customize it like this. So here we have a view with three different labels in it of different sizes with different data in it too. So I'll show you how to customize it that way. And then I'm going to show you, if you look over at this GIF, how to customize it so you can scroll it sideways. Normally the picker view goes up and down, but here I made it so it goes from side to side. And that right there is kind of like extreme customization. <laughs> and it's very neat, has a very cool effect, but there are some tricks to it that you have to account for. So that'll be the second video. And the third part will finally be notifications and how to respond to changes in the picker view. So if you see over here, like when I change this to a different day, then the price down here changes. It's calculating the price between this day and this day and adding them all up. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to cover is how to set up this custom view right here. And we'll go into customizing the picker view. Okay, to get started, first what I'm going to do is just kind of give you an overview of the project that we have so far. So the project is just basically a single view, and what you saw before is when I click the next and the back button, is all it does is changes two views. So if we come here, we see there are two views right here. This is the first one, and this is the second one. And all they're, right now they're stacked on top of each other, but when I run it, it puts one view over on the side, so when I click next, this one slides out and the other one slides in. No, so this is the view that we're going to be working with right here, this second one. So let's click on the first one and uninstall that to kind of get rid of it here. So as you can see, I just have two picker views side by side. And those are the ones that I'm going to start with. And when we start, we're not going to have any calculation to update this label right here. That's not until the third video. So let's get started with these right here. Let me go back to this view and get it back showing again. And then I'll just kind of give you a brief overview of the project setup here. What I did is I kind of tried to simplify it a little bit. So I have model view controller. So we'll just use the controller for now and we'll go into the view controller and see what that looks like. Now, as you can see, it's pretty minimized here. And I just create a bunch of functions because I didn't want to confuse anyone or you know show any unnecessary code that we're not gonna be working on. So what I did is I just created another file that is an extension class of this view controller right here. And I put all these functions in this extension right here, you know, as you can see right here. So that way it just kind of cleans up the file a little bit, gets it ready for the tutorial. And then we can start building off of uh, what we need in here. Okay, now to begin with, pickers, picker views are like table views. They require delegates to tell them how to show the data and how to react when you interact with the picker view. So to set those up, we already have outlets for what we need. And they are these two outlets right here, the arrival day and the departure day. So normally when you set up a picker view, you do something like this. You assign a delegate, and we don't have one set up right now. And then you also assign your data source, like that. And again, we don't have anything right now, so of course this isn't going to work. Now what I could do is, just like a table view, I could have this class implement the delegate and data source protocols for a UI picker view. And then I would just add all that code down here. But I want to show you a different way. And you can do this with table views too. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a custom class for a picker view that has a delegate and a data source in it, and then I'm going to assign that class to the delegate and the data source. You could make these separate files, but I don't really see the point in doing that because really we're only going to need uh, four, I think four functions combined between the two of these. So the file itself isn't going to be too big to hold the delegate and the data source. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, which folder should it go into? Well, since the picker view is a view, I'm actually going to create this delegate in this data source 
right in this view group here. So let's create a new file. And it's going to be a Cocoa Touch class because it's a UI picker view. And let's just change this here. UI picker view, there we go. And for the name, it holds the days. And it gets the data from a model. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call it date model picker. And I'll just go right in here. All right, good. And I'm not going to need this data right here. And I should explain something too. This picker view is going to get data from a function in this data file right here. So it's it's a bunch of days, and it's all the days, or most of the days in May, and they have prices for different days. And it's going to be showing this model right here. It basically has a day name, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, a price, and a date. And that's what we're going to show in our custom view. So that's why I called it date model picker, is because it's going to be representing the date model right here. Okay, so one of the things that this class will need is the data in which it's going to show, just like a tree view, right? So let's create a variable for that. And I'll just call it model data. And the type will be an array of that date model, right? Yeah, this one right here. And I'm just saying here that it'll definitely have a value. I'm definitely going to assign it a value. Okay, good. We have a variable that's going to hold all of our data. Now what we need to do is implement the data source in the, de in the delegate, right? So now you're probably used to seeing something like this. You know, we need the UI picker view delegate, and we also need this data source. So you've probably seen something like this where someone just adds it right at the end of the uh, class declaration. And the uh, picker view data source, like that. And then we can put all the functions down here. There's another way that you could do it. Uh, we're, not, we're not going to do it this way. That is one way. It's definitely a good, valid way. But I just want to show you another way in which you can kind of use to organize the parts of your class, I guess you could say. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create an extension for this class, the date model picker. And each extension is going to implement either the data source or the delegate. Okay, so I'm extending this class, and I'm going to go with the, let's just go with the data source first, since it's the first one showing up there. Okay, there you go. And now we can create functions inside of here that implement this uh, data source, or this protocol, rather. And it's just like adding it up here and adding the functions inside that class. There's, there's no difference. It just kind of separates out the functionality from the class. Okay, now let's check what we have to implement for the data source. I'm just going to hold down the command key and click on the class. And as you can see, there's only two, two functions that I need to implement. Number of components. And components, oh yeah, just like it says here in this comment, components is like the number of columns in your picker view. So you saw on the first screen where you could pick the month and the year, those are two components or two columns. So for our custom picker view, we're only going to have one column. And then for this one, it's a number of rows in component. So basically, we're just going to look at how many rows or how many items do we have in our array of data, and that'll be the number of rows in the component. So let's go back here. And, you know, you can just type in picker view, and it should give you, oh, here's, a, okay, number of components. And there's number of rows in the components. So let's start with number of components, which again is number of columns. And we're only going to have one. And then we'll have, we'll just type in picker view again. And then it gives us the number of rows right here. And we're just going to return the, the count for the model data here. And that gives us basically the count of how many items are in that array. Okay, so that's one that's implemented. So let's implement the delegate. And remember, we're extending this date model picker class here. Right here. And 
For this one, we're going to implement the delegate. Okay, now let's take a look in here and see what we need to implement. It has a number of different things here. And let's start with this one for now. This is probably the simplest one. And that is just a uh, plain string, title for row. It just returns a string and we show it right in the picker view. Okay, yeah, it's our first one right here, title for row. And we're going to return, uh, we need to access our model. And notice right here, it tells us which row we're actually in, right? So we want the, we're going to use that as the index. And then if I hit dot, it gives me the three fields that are in my model. So if I look at my model here, it's showing me these three fields right here. So I can just pick which one I want to assign to the, I can just pick the one that I want to return as the string. So for now, let's just return price. Okay, so this is the minimum setup. We're still not customizing it yet, but I'm kind of showing you how we're setting it up. And let's just run it. I just want to make sure it works. Before we can run it, we need to actually attach it here because we still have these question marks. Okay, the first thing I need to do is I actually need to create a variable to hold it. So I'm going to create that here. And we're going to call it... Uh, we'll just call it date model picker and it'll be a type of date model picker and I'm using the exclamation point to say that I'm definitely going to assign a value which will be right here we'll say date model picker not that one uh, where is it it's not showing me my variable uh, let's just type it in manually here. Maybe it'll work. Equals, and we'll just instantiate a new date model picker. Like that. Okay, and then I can assign it here. And it does not want to show me the IntelliSense for that. Am I spelling it wrong? What am I doing wrong here, guys? Maybe I am spelling it wrong. I just copy and paste it. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now there's something else that's missing here, right? I, I still haven't assigned data to this date model picker. So let me do that. Date model picker dot model data right here. And remember, I had a function that returned it in the model from the data class. So I'm just going to call that data class and then get the data. And that should return it. All right, so let's run it and see what we get. Okay, we click Next. And there we go. Now notice, on, we didn't set this one up, so there's no data for this picker. We only set up one picker. And so that's good. It shows all the prices. It's kind of boring though, right? You know, it's just black text. So let's customize it now. And actually, let's set this one up first. Make sure that one is good to go. So we'll just go down here. And that's for the arrival. So the other one is the departure day picker delegate. Notice I can use the same, the same model, the same uh, custom class with the delegate and the data source. Uh, is it? Yeah, data model picker. Okay. Okay, I see what I did wrong. It, I I called it data. It should be date model picker. I think that was the, the problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this arrow right here and do edit all in scope. And then that kind of puts it in a, like a refactor mode where I can change the name. And so they all change at one time. Okay, good. And then we need to do the data source too. this one right here. There we go. Now if we run it, both of them should be reading from the data source. Okay, let's take a look. And there we go. Okay, good. So let's customize this now. Okay, so we're going to go back to our date model picker, and we're going to get rid of this function here. Instead, 
we're going to use a different function. Let's go back into here and take a look. So it's basically telling us here that we have a couple of choices, right? The first function that we chose was title for row, and it's just a string, doesn't do anything else. And you notice there's another one that we could have used too, which is which returns an NS attributed string. And what that is, it's basically a string, but you can assign attributes to that string. You can tell it which font you want to use, what color you want to use, how big you want that font to be. So that's another option. But what we want is this one right here. This function returns a UI view, and that's what we have in ours. We're going to have a UI view with three different labels in it. And there's one other thing. We're going to combine it with something else too. Right here. See, it says returns width, returns width of the column and height of a row for each component. And that's what we will also need is this one right here, row height for the component. Okay, so let's do the row height first. And again, you can just start off, you know, just like the table view, right? You know, like when you, when you want to implement protocol functions, you just start typing in table view. Well, for here, you can just start typing in picker view. And there's the width, there's the row height right here. This is the one we want. And we're just going to return 100. Each view will be 100 high. And start typing in picker view again. And we're looking for the one that returns the UI view, which looks like this one right here. And you can just double check it by looking over here. It returns a UI view. So this is the one we want. Now, the first thing we want to do is create a view. So let's create that variable. And then we're going to instantiate it here. We want a UI view. And we want to define the frame, like how big it's going to be, right? So let's create a new CG rec. We'll just use this this one right here. So we can define you know the x and the y and how wide it's going to be and how high it's going to be. X and y, we'll keep those at zero. And then for the width, we'll be 100 and the height will be 100 too. Okay, so now we have our frame, so let's return that. Or we have our view, rather, with the size. And then we need to start adding our labels to it. So let's start with our first label here. And there's going to be three labels, so I'm just going to call them top, middle, and bottom label. All right, good. So the next thing I need is a label. This will be the top label, and it's going to be a new label, new UI label. There we go. And I want to define the frame. Allowing me to set the frame will prevent some extra code of having to set the constraints. So I'm not going to set any constraints. I'm just going to define the positions of where these labels should be using a frame. So we're going to create a new CG rect here. Yeah, we're going to use the integers. So it'll start at zero. And because it's the top label, it, the Y will be zero as well. And for the width, I'm just going to use the same width of the, the UI view that I just created this view here. So I could say view dot frame, I'm, you know, just look at the frame and then get the width from there and that'll work. And for the height, I think I'll just say like 15. And that should do it. Now I could do this and that'll work fine. But, you know, notice we this number 100 is used all over the place, right? It's the height, it's the height and the width, and it's the width for this top label too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable instead to hold this, this measurement in case I want to change anything. So let's see, let's create a width variable. What should we call it? Custom width. equals 100 and we'll just use that this way if you guys ever need to change anything you know you could just change it in one place and we're going to use this for all of our other labels and we also have a height in two different places here so let's create a custom height equals 100 and we'll implement that here and right here so that way, if you guys ever want to change it in the future, it'll be easy to do. You just change it in one place. Okay, good. Now after, oh, what is this saying? Oh, it has to be a CG float. All right, that's fine. We can do that. I believe all the other ones are CG floats too, or can accept CG floats. Okay, good. 
And once I have my label, I'm going to be adding that to the view. So I can just say view.addSubView and then just add this top label like that. And then it should be positioned correctly. Of course, the label doesn't have any data yet though, right? So let's give it some data, top label.text. And we're going to get the data. Again, we're going to get it from our model data. And how do we know which one to get? We just look at the row that we're on. And you see this is one of the parameters right here, is the row. Just like a table view. A lot of this is just like a table view, right? And this top one will be the day name. Okay, now remember, by default it's going to be black, so we want to change the color to white. And this is a color, so we can just say white. It's an eno. We don't have to put UI color in front of there. I mean, we can. We can do this. But we don't have to. I'll just leave it there for now since I typed it. And by, uh, by default, you know, depending on the language of your phone, it's going to be left aligned. So we want it to be centered. So let's change that too. Text alignment equals dot center right there. Okay, and one last thing that we need to do. We need to set up the size of the font. So let's do that. Top label dot font equals, and we're going to create a new UI font right there. And we're going to use the system font. And I'm going to use this one right here because I want to define the size and I want to change the weight. The weight is like how thick the font is. So for this one, let's make it 14. And the weight will be UI font weight. And see, here's all the different weights that you have. I want to go with thin on this one. Okay, so let's test that. Let's see how that looks. And make sure our data is showing up correctly here. Again, all it's going to be showing right now is just the, the name of the day. Okay, so let's click next. There we go, that looks good. So we have the the day names here. All right, so let's just add the other labels. And I think you, I think you get the idea of like what I'm doing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the rest of the code here just to save us time because it's a bit, I'm basically just duplicating what I have here. Okay, good, we have all of our labels in and I just want to point out some of the things that I did a little bit different here. On the middle label, instead of pushing it down on the Y axis there, you know, the, the vertical height, I, I made it, I had it start at the very top, and for the height, I used the custom height. So basically, you know, as you can see from the size, it's using the full height and width of our UI view, and it's being centered, so it'll always be centered. That way, it just kind of saves me how to figure out how to vertically center it all the time. I could use constraints, but this is just kind of like an easy way for me to get around it. I don't have any problems using constraints. So let's run this and see how it looks. All right, this is perfect. The Probably the only thing that I would change is I might move the, the day down a little bit because you can see they're they're kind of close together. So let's do that. Let's push this down. Maybe let's try like 10 and see how that looks. Yeah, this looks a lot better. Okay, so there you go. There's your custom view for your custom UI picker view. And as you can see, you know, just going over it again, it's really just two functions in your picker view delegate. You want to assign the custom height, and then you just want to use the view for row. And that'll give you your custom look that you're looking for. Okay, thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Consider sharing it with your friends if you think they can learn something from this video. And consider subscribing because the next video, I'm going to show you how to take these UI picker views and make them horizontal so they slide horizontally, like I showed you at the beginning of the video. And then the third video, again, will cover notifications. All right, thanks, guys.